So we have seen how a balance sheet would look like and what information it would contain. Before we proceed, we will slightly change the words so that it appears more like an actual one. We will insert something called as reserves and surplus. What is it? Where does it come from? I'll explain to you in a moment. Secondly, what you see here as short term debt, actually in a real balance sheet, it is called as current liabilities. And the long term debt is called as other liabilities. All right. And under the head of assets, there will always be some money in the bank in the form of cash because the current assets will always some of the current assets will always be in the form of cash for the routine expenditure of the company. All right. Now we come to something called as EBITDA or the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. In my previous course where we talked about the fundamentals and the concepts of finance and investment, there we have discussed about EBITDA. I shall not be repeating it here, but it will suffice to say that EBITDA is a measure of a company's profitability which shows the earnings before deducting the interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. Now, if you say in a layman's language, we can call it something like gross profit. All right. So let us say that EBITDA of the company for a financial year is $21 million. All right. Now, out of this $21 million, let us say that $1 million has gone towards catering for the depreciation and amortization. Another $2 million goes towards payment of tax to the government. Let us say another $3 million go towards payment of interest to the lenders. We have seen that the company has a debt of 20 million. So this debt carries some interest, annual interest, and that interest has to be paid to the lenders. A hypothetical figure, I am just considering 3, 3 million for the sake of explanation. All right. So, out of this 21 million, 3 plus 2, 5 and 1, 6 million has gone towards payment of these things interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So, what remains after paying this is actually the net profit or the net earning of the company. Let us say after deducting this, 15 million is the net profit of the company. All right. This 15 million net profit actually belongs to the shareholders and it should rightly be distributed to the shareholders in the form of dividend. Okay. But no good company will do that. A good company will always pay a portion of this net profit to the shareholders in the form of dividend. And a considerable portion of that money, it will hold back as retained earnings. You got my point? Let us say in this case, if the net profit is 15 million, the company will distribute say 3 million in the form of dividend. The remaining 12 million, it will hold back as retained earnings. Now, where does this 12 million go? This also belongs to the shareholders, but where does it go into the balance sheet? It will go as reserves and surplus. And because it belongs to the shareholders, it goes as a liability. All right. And simultaneously, it will be taken as cash in bank or it will be taken in the asset because it is available to the company for utilization. All right. For some specific purposes. So the balance sheet remains balanced at all time. When this 12 million goes into the reserves and surplus under the liabilities, it also comes as 12 million in the form of assets available to the company. All right. Now, what is the significance of this reserve and surplus? Why should a company retain some of the profit in the form of retained earnings? That is because the company can make better use of that money for the purpose of growth, 
diversification, expansion and in the process the company will generate more profit than what the shareholder would have done with that money had the money gone to the shareholder in the form of dividend. Normally when a shareholder receives a dividend he would either spend that money or he will not be able to utilize that money in as profitable manner as the company can do it. Therefore, the company retains that money on behalf of the shareholder, puts it back into the business, generates more profit on that so that next year they have even more profit and when they have more profit, again a small portion of that they will give us dividend. A considerably larger portion they will retain as retained earning and then churn it again in the same manner. So what happens is from year to year the reserves and surplus will go on increasing and that adds to the enterprise value of the company. When the enterprise value of the company is increasing because of the increase in its net worth then the market price of the share will also increase. So ultimately the shareholders or the investors are benefiting. So this is the relevance or the significance of the retained earnings or reserves and surplus. When we are analyzing the balance sheet or other financial documents, this is one of the most important thing which we will be evaluating on a year to year basis.